All right, guys, welcome to our second lecture in the history of combat sports. Um, we're going to look at a 30-year period from 1900 to 1930. <clears throat> very, very um, significant, influ uh, influential time uh, in not only sport in America, but particularly in, uh, in combat sports. So we left off talking about um, John L. Sullivan, the Boston Strong Boy. We talked about him being the greatest bare-knuckle fighter in history and the last bare-knuckle champion um, and had an epic fight with with uh, Jack Kilrain um, where the fight was stopped in the 75th round. Um, Sullivan, as we discussed last week, went on and fought, fought uh, gentleman Jim Cor uh, Corbett in 1892 and lost in, in a gloved boxing match. Uh, and we talked about that he'd kind of set a, a really dangerous uh, precedent in not fighting African-American fighters. So I want to, you know, make sure we understand his significance because it leads into to all of this, this other stuff. So <clears throat> we went through a period of time over several years where we had a, a, a lot of changing of champions. So... Um, as we talked about, Sullivan lost to Corbett in 1892. Um, Corbett went on and lost to a um, um, New Zealander named Bob Fitzsimmons in um, 1897. Um, and then Fitzsimmons went on to lose to uh, Jim Jeffries in 1902. Something significant about that was Jeffries outweighed him by 50 pounds, which you would really never see today. And Jim Jeffries, who um, was a pretty boring fighter, very uh, passive fighter, retired undefeated in, uh, in 1905. And this is significant because we didn't have a changing of the champion inside the ring. The, the champion just quit boxing. So a tournament was held to figure out who the next champion, heavyweight champion was going to be. And I'm going to stop right here for a second. Understand, guys, we're going to spend the majority of our time talking about heavyweight champions, only because it was the most significant um, weight class in boxing. We'll talk about some others uh, sporadically throughout the class, but just understand that up until we start talking about UFC, we're going to talk primarily about heavyweight boxing. So this tournament of champions was won by Canadian Tommy Burns. And, and as I said before, with Sullivan setting kind of a danger of precedent, no fighters of color were allowed to compete in this tournament. <clears throat> so enter Papa Jack Johnson. And, and uh, Jack Johnson was a, a black fighter, um, and he basically started a campaign to shame the Canadian Burns into fighting him. And he chased him across the globe for pretty much three years before uh, Burns finally gave in and fought him. And they fought in 1908, and Johnson destroyed him. Um, he, was a he was a champ from 1908 to 1915. And probably one of the most controversial fighters of all time. He was Ali before Ali was Ali. White America hated him. Okay, and basically the white media, who, who, who were heavily racist, Badgered the former champion Jim Jeffries, who had you know who had retired undefeated, to come out of retirement to fight Jack Johnson. Uh, in a, a way of looking at it, they saw Jeffries as kind of the only thing that stood in the way of having a, a black um, heavyweight champion. And Jeffries didn't really want to fight, and he was well out of his prime for the fight. And so this fight took place on July the 4th, which was very, very, you know, uh, symbolic in 1910 in Reno. And, uh, and Johnson just pummeled and he taunted Jeffries. And, um, and he beat him solidly. And a lot of people who don't really think about this or know about this, this was probably the single most prominent sporting event in the 20th century, guys. It broke the color barrier in sports. And you have to understand at this time that it, the fight was filmed. Now, there was a live audience watching it, but it was filmed and it was shown in theaters. And when white America saw not only the beating that Johnson gave Jeffries, but how he taunted him the whole entire fight, 
it led to rioting and it led to beatings and killings of African Americans. And um, it got so bad that that um, Johnson um, was harassed and eventually fled the country. Um, Johnson lost to Jess Willard his heavyweight championship to Jeff Willard and not uh, Jess Willard in 1915. They fought in Havana, Cuba. Um, and um, even to that day, Johnson claimed that he had threw the fight. Now, something we have to understand about Papa Jack, and this will this will hold true very much across all the heavyweight champions that we study, um, was he was. Um, very, very uh, disliked by white America, and he was very flamboyant out of the ring. In 1913, he was um, he was falsely arrested and jailed on the Man Act. Now, let me kind of explain what this means. He um, he was very very well known for frequenting uh, prostitutes, and particularly blonde headed women. Um, whom he ended up marrying a, a blonde-headed woman, and he took her across the state line. And even though she was his wife, they arrested him at the time that said you could not take a woman across the line basically to do uh, nefarious things. And so they jailed him on the Man Act, uh, tr completely trumped up charge, and he, he fled to Europe. Now, understand, um, he was not a very good person. He was a womanizer. He was a very heavy drinker. He owned his own speakeasy, the kind of underground pub in Chicago, and he was jailed numerous times for, for legitimate things. Uh, and he was hated by white America, as I've said, uh, you know, and you got to understand, guys, at this, you know, we have some race issues in this country right now. What we're experiencing right now is nothing on par for what the, what was going on at this time. And so... Um, African Americans kind of felt a combination of pride and apprehension. What I mean is that they were they had a lot of pride because they they had you know a, a, a black African American heavyweight champion. They were very apprehensive because um, at that time uh, African Americans were being killed in the street for no reason, and so. His kind of flamboyance, his taunting, his way of doing things um, really hurt black boxers for several decades. Okay, they, they didn't really get a legitimate chance to fight and be significantly recognized until Joe Lewis. And we'll talk kind of about his, his the difference in demeanor. But I want you to file this lecture away in your brain and file Jack Johnson away, away in your brain because you're going to see a lot of a lot of similarities in not only his fighting style, but also his, his way of taunting in the ring when we start to study Ali. Um, so as I said, Willard, Jess Willard beat um, Jack Johnson. In 1919, Jack Dempsey beat Willard. And Dempsey was the champion from um, 1919 and 1926. He was an exact opposite boxer from Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson was very defensive, almost boring to watch. Um, Dempsey was a brawler, much like Tyson. He just kind of laid it out there and just fought. And he's a significant champion because he was a champion during the golden age of sport, the 1920s. You have to understand this was a, a really, really publicized time of sport. So you had prize fighting. You had horse racing. You had golfers like Bobby Jones. You had Babe Ruth. And Dempsey was right there as considered just as big of a, um, of a public figure as Ruth was. Now, as I told you, most of the time we're going to spend talking about heavyweight champions. But I wanted to include this lightweight Jimmy Wilde into this. Um, because he was a significant fighter during this time. He was only 102 pounds, but he, uh, he knocked out or stopped fighters in 101 of his 151 recorded fights. He claimed he had up to 854 fights, and he fought during World War I, which hindered his career. He ended up with a career record of 133 uh, wins, 13 draws, and only four losses. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this um, this kind of 30-year time span. We're really getting into the really popular time 
of, uh, of boxing and uh, your first assignment is going to allow you to look at that more.